Joe Biden is being flagrantly lawless in that he is refusing to impose mandatory congressional sanctions passed by Congress in the Countering America's Adversaries Through Sanctions Act, also known as CATSA. CATSA passed Congress overwhelmingly. The vote was 98 to 2. President Biden, and in particular, the Department of Treasury is refusing to implement the law. I've spoken directly with Secretary Yellen. I've spoken directly with the Deputy Secretary of Treasury. The law is clear and unequivocal, and because of the political agenda of the Biden White House, because of President Biden's desire to surrender to Vladimir Putin and give him a multi-billion dollar pipeline, weakening America, weakening Europe, and giving vast resources to Putin to hold Europe subject to energy blackmail, Treasury is refusing to follow the law. Nonetheless, in the spirit of reasonableness, I'm happy to offer the senator from Oregon the same deal, or a similar deal at least, right here and right now. There is a bill that I filed that imposes CATSA 228 sanctions on Nord Stream 2 AG. Every Democrat in this chamber has supported sanctions on Nord Stream 2. In a moment, I'm going to ask for unanimous consent to pass the legislation simply mandating that the Biden administration, that the Treasury Department, and this is a Treasury nominee that we are discussing, follow the law. If the Senator from Oregon will agree to my unanimous consent request, and that bill passes the Senate, I will not object to this nominee if the Senator from Oregon is willing to accept that, because that will move the process along. The objective is to stop this pipeline that strengthens Putin, weakens, weakens Europe, and weakens America. And indeed, if we pass the legislation mandating the CATSA sanctions, I won't object to this nominee. When that legislation passes the House, I'll lift my hold on another Treasury nominee. And when the President does the right thing and signs it into law, I'll lift my holds on all the Treasury nominees. So it is a reasonable, incremental step forward. Preserving the right to object, Mr. President. Senator from Oregon. Thank you, Mr. President. Let's understand exactly what's at issue here. Jonathan Davidson has been nominated to be the Deputy Undersecretary for Legislative Affairs. In that particular role, he would not be directly involved in decisions over sanctions, number one. Number two, when it comes to Nord Stream 2, the Biden administration, to their credit, has recognized the threat from Russia, but also that the pipeline is nearly complete and the Trump administration failed to stop the construction. Everything my colleague from Texas is raising, his concerns about Nord, Nord Stream 2, is already happening with another pipeline, Turk Stream 2, and my colleague is aware of this. He's been briefed repeatedly. Now, for those who don't have access to the same kind of information that my colleague has, gas is already being diverted from Ukraine into Europe through Turk Stream 2 because the past administration did nothing about that pipeline either. The Biden administration has actually put a plan forward to mitigate the effects of Nord Stream 2 and has received concrete agreements from the Germans to move Ukraine toward energy independence and address Russian threats. Reserving the right to object, I recognize that my friend from Oregon has been busy with affairs on the Finance Committee and so has not been involved in the now two years of debate over Nord Stream 2 on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. But unfortunately, that has resulted in the senator from Oregon being given talking points, perhaps from the administration, perhaps from colleagues, that are simply factually incorrect. I'm sure that is inadvertent. Uh, the senator from Oregon just said that there is no way to stop this pipeline and that the Trump administration failed to impose sanctions to stop the pipeline. Both of those statements are factually wrong. I was the author of two separate pieces of legislation that passed into law concerning Nord Stream 2. Both were bipartisan legislation. Both I authored with Senator Gene Shaheen, a Democrat in the Senate, 
Both passed with overwhelming bipartisan support from both houses of Congress. The first bill passed in December of 2019. Nord Stream 2 at the time was more than 90% complete, and the argument then that was being pushed by Russian disinformation and that sadly has been echoed by the Biden administration and was just echoed by the senator from Oregon, the argument from Russian disinformation was the pipeline can't be stopped, it's too late. We know that was Russian disinformation because it was conclusively disproven. Putin stopped building the Nord Stream 2 pipeline the very day that the cruise Shaheen bipartisan sanctions were signed into law. Not the next day, not the next week, that day we stopped the pipeline in its tracks. But Mr. President, it was not only stopped for one day, it was stopped for more than a year. For December of 19, for January, February, March, every month in 2020, the pipeline lay dormant. It was a piece of metal at the bottom of the ocean. So the claim that we cannot stop this pipeline is flat out false, because we did. And by the way, when the senator from Oregon said the Trump administration couldn't stop this pipeline, that again is just incorrect. When the president signed the legislation, the pipeline was stopped that day. It remained stopped for over a year. And when did Putin return to building this pipeline? The date is important. Putin returned to building the Nord Stream 2 pipeline on January 24th, 2021. Four days after Joe Biden was sworn into office. And he did so because Joe Biden and his team had already conveyed weakness that they would not enforce U.S. sanctions law and that they would roll over and give Putin and Russia a generational geopolitical gift. The only reason Putin began building again is because the Biden White House defied U.S. law to surrender to Putin. Now, Joe Biden is entitled to believe that's a good policy idea. What he's not entitled to do is ignore U.S. law. And the senator from Oregon suggests this nominee has nothing to do with that. Well, it is the Department of Treasury that is ignoring the Katza law, that is refusing to follow the policy. And, and, and by the way, the European Parliament, my friends on the Democratic side of the aisle like to consider themselves lovers of our friends in Europe. The European Parliament voted on Nord Stream 2. The vote was roughly 500 to 50 against Nord Stream 2 because it makes our European allies subject to energy blackmail by Putin. Objection was heard. Mr. President, I'm going to be very brief and then make a unanimous consent request. Again, we have a difference of opinion with respect to the facts. That's what the Senate's all about, is real debates. And in a moment, I'm going to ask unanimous consent to put into the record at this point an article just a few days ago from the Wall Street Journal that makes the truth about the Nord Stream 2 AG very clear. And in effect, in the Wall Street Journal article that we're going to put into the record, the pipeline owner said last week that construction on the pipeline has been completed. There is no reason to object to this very talented individual, John Davidson, to head this important post after he got a 28 to nothing vote. I don't have objection to the article being included in the record, but I would note that once again, the senator from Oregon is limited by the fact that he has not participated in the debate on this in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee for the last two years. Um, because what he stated in his first remarks was there was no way to stop the pipeline initially and the Trump administration failed to do so. That was factually incorrect. We stopped the pipeline the day President Trump signed the bipartisan cruise Shaheen sanctions into law. That was December of 2019 and the pipeline was stopped for over a year. As I mentioned, on January 24th of 2020, four days after Joe Biden was sworn into office, Putin began return to building the pipeline because Biden had already telegraphed his surrender to Russia. Now, what my friend from Oregon just said is he repeated news coverage that the pipeline is now today complete. And, and that is in fact correct, that because Biden surrendered on this point, Putin went all in and finished the pipeline. But this is where 
being part of the Foreign Relations Committee discussion matters because even though the pipeline is now physically complete, it does not mean it is operative. After the pipeline is physically complete, there are months of certifications required in multiple authorities, and the legislation that Congress passed as a bipartisan matter also imposes sanctions on any entity, any company that certifies the pipeline. And indeed, the position of the Biden State Department has been that even when the pipeline is complete, we can stop it ever from going online by stopping certification. And so the legislation that I just asked for consent would do exactly that. It would stop certification and it would leave it as a hunk of metal rather than an operating pipeline enriching Putin at the expense of Europe and America. So we still have time to stop this. And one final observation. This morning I spent a couple of hours in a classified briefing on this topic on Nord Stream 2. And a question that I posed to the Biden State Department, I said, what exactly did Joe Biden, did the administration get in exchange for surrendering to Russia in a way that will impact this country and Europe for decades to come? And the answer, I will say, was altogether unsatisfactory. The only thing the Biden White House got was goodwill from Angela Merkel, whose party was just defeated resoundingly this past weekend in the election. So Angela Merkel is on her way out. We got goodwill from someone who will very soon no longer be the leader of Germany. Instead, the German people voted in, elevated the Greens, who were vocally opposed to the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. So the new government in Germany is not going to appreciate Biden's surrendering to Putin in a way that hurts the environment and hurts Germany, but we've alienated the Ukrainians, we've alienated the Poles, we've alienated Eastern Europe. The European Union voted 500 to 50, roughly, against Nord Stream 2. We got nothing, and we hurt U.S. jobs. This is foolhardy, and I'm hopeful that the Senate will exercise our historical role over foreign policy and prevent a president and administration from making this mistake. I would note, Secretary of State Blinken and the State Department argued vociferously in the inter interagency process to sanction Nord Stream 2 AG. And it was the political operatives at the Biden White House that overrode the, the, the State Department. They should not have done so, and today, the Treasury Department should follow the law and impose sanctions under CATSA or delist them and trigger a vote in this Congress. I yield the floor.